Welcome to My Backyard. I'm Joe, this is My Backyard. Tonight we're playing with Camtasia and we're gonna make something that you've probably seen all over YouTube and it's the uh, little like and subscribe call to action. Um, what we're gonna do specifically is we're gonna do a little um, animation of a bell glyph. Um, now a glyph is just a, another word for a symbol, right? And um, it's a simplified symbol. Uh, you could almost think of hieroglyphs like the Egyptians would use um, or cuneiforms like the Syrians, right? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do the little uh, notification bell and ask our, you, uh, our viewers to click that bell when they subscribe to our channel, um, which I want to encourage you to do right now. So let's show the graphic and let's go ahead and dive right in. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by just going over to my library. And uh, Brooks Andrus has kindly provided me with this excellent Feather Icons pack. So Feather Icons, if you haven't heard of it, is a uh, open source vector glyph pack. Uh, that you could go download yourself and create your own Camtasia library. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and locate the bell glyph in this. Now these are vectors, so that means that I can resize them and do all kinds of things with them. And I'm gonna grab the bell. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the bell down to the timeline. Okay, and because I'm working at a pretty large size here, which um, in this case, I wanna make sure, I'll, I'm actually gonna go all the way up to 4K. So it's gonna be really tiny on my project size. Let's go back out. There it is, it's pretty small. So let's go ahead and enlarge this to, I don't know, let's just say 14,000. Okay, so that's that's a pretty decent size. Um, I'm gonna zoom back in. Now, when you first look at it, you're gonna say, that is not the color I was hoping for. Well, I wanna go ahead and apply a color tint. One of the things you'll notice is the color tint is already applied to this, uh, this glyph. If you don't know where the color tint effect is, it, it lives inside of the visual effects bin and I can just drag it onto that media. And when I do, I'm presented with uh, two options in the properties panel. One is what color you wanna associate with the lighter tones of the provided source file. And then the other is what you wanna do with the dark tones. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the dark tones to white. And just like that, I've got a white glyph, and that's what I really wanted. Okay, so you can see this is a really well-designed glyph. It's um, super simple. We're gonna bring it to life. So how do I animate this? Well, if you're familiar with Camtasia, you know we have some really powerful animation tools. If I go over to the animation arrow, that is sort of the key that unlocks the, uh, the door of Camtasia here, I'm gonna drag down the custom animation to this shape. And you know, while we're at it, let's go ahead and make this, uh, let's go ahead and make this 10 seconds long, just so we have enough room to work. And, uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom my timeline in so that we can kind of see. Now the first move we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate the bell to the right. And we want this to sort of be an exaggerated move. Now, after I do this move, I'm just gonna bring down another animation. And uh, this one I'm gonna make slightly shorter and I'm just gonna bring it back down to the center. Okay, so let's just go ahead and preview this. Let's deselect so you can see it, I space bar. Okay, so I have that, you know, bell is lifting and then it, it drops. Now the problem though is if you have a discerning eye here, you're gonna see that the bell is moving in a way that doesn't quite feel realistic. And that is because the pivot point of a bell is not its center of mass. Camtasia, being the excellent simplistic tool that it is in terms of giving you this quick power to animate things, uh, draws the center point of a, of a shape right in the middle, right? That's sort of what we would call the uh, anchor point for animations. What we're gonna do today though, is it needs that anchor point to be higher. Actually, we want it right at the, the top of the bell where, where it would pivot, right? And so what we're gonna do is delete these animations. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of those. And what I'm gonna do is this technique where I'm gonna group this glyph. And after I group it, I'm gonna change the size. And you'll see how I'm able to accomplish this effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and Command G on the Mac, Control G on Windows. And now that I have this group, I'm gonna go ahead and name it. Uh, let's call it the, um, let's just call it the bell glyph. Nice and simple. And now that I have this, you can see I have, you know, a, a bounding box around it. And now I'm gonna right click on the group and I'm gonna hit resize group and I'm gonna go custom size. Now you can see that I have a width of 336, a height of 336. Let's raise the height to, let's say 500 in this example. Okay, so 500, that gets me about here. Now, what I'm gonna do just for a point of reference, I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste. And I'm gonna go ahead and use, you know what, I'm gonna go down to track one and I'm gonna use this as my reference. So I'm just gonna bring the opacity down 
I'm gonna do what's called an onion skinning attack, uh, technique. And I'm gonna go back up to track two's bell glyph and I'm gonna drag it up until I get to about the base of that bell underneath of it, okay? So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring, I'm gonna go inside the group and I'm gonna bring the bell back down, okay? So I'm gonna go inside this group, I'm gonna grab a hold of that bell and I'm just gonna bring it back down so that it's lined up with that reference. So let's go back out to the main timeline. Let's go ahead and delete the bell from track one, bring this bell back down. And now if I start rotating, you'll notice that this bell is is relative, it's close. It's not perfect, but it's close. So we're gonna go ahead and call this good enough for our example here. And I'm gonna drag my animation down and let's repeat our initial steps again. So I have this initial animation and I'm gonna set the easing to exponential. I think that works great for this one. And let's go ahead and rotate it up to about there, that, that looks kind of nice. Isn't that nice how Camtasia has that little snap as well? It kind of gives me a sense of where the, um, you know, those sort of neat angles are. And let's go ahead and drag another animation down. Okay, and this one again, I'm gonna make a little bit shorter. And let's go ahead and make this animation go all the way to the next snap. And let's just repeat. So I'm gonna just bring this one down, make it a little shorter. Now that I have momentum, I can kind of make them shorter, right? And let's just go ahead and do this a couple more times, okay? So I'm gonna bring this one down again to the snap line. And, and let's say it starts to peter out and, and we'll go ahead and, and now we'll make it a little less and it's, it's slowing down. So we'll make the animation go a little slower and, and then we'll have it stop. Okay, so let's go right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview what this looks like. So if I go back, I deselect and I hit spacebar. Not too bad. Now that last part feels like it goes kind of slow for me. So let's go ahead and let's speed it up a bit. So I'm gonna bring, select that animation. Actually, I should zoom in. It's always important to zoom in. And I'm gonna go ahead and move some things in and not quite as a short in duration as the previous animations were that we were doing that was building up that momentum. This is just gonna be just a little slower than what we had set it at. So let's go ahead and preview that one more time and then I'm gonna show you the next cool bit of polish we can apply to this. Okay, so not too bad. It's a pretty good uh, bell animation. So let's go ahead and trim this off now. So I'm gonna go back to the animation end point, right about there. All right, so the next technique I'm gonna show you is how to put this in a little icon glyph because call to actions in this modern world we live in, um, one great uh, sort of interactive element that we're all used to seeing interacting with is an icon rounded rectangle. So if you have a smartphone, which you might even be watching this on a smartphone, um, I see you, I'm just kidding. But that little, uh, uh, that little smartphone of yours has all these little apps on them, right? And those app icons are, are very much um, a norm in interaction, uh, interaction design. So you could consider those uh, good affordances. So we're gonna use a good affordance here. So I'm gonna get on the bell again. So let's go right to the beginning. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this bell glyph up to track two. I'm gonna go over to my annotations bin and I'm gonna select the shapes tab. Now in the shapes, under the basics set or the basics style, you're gonna see this little octagon. And I'm gonna bring this octagon down and let's go ahead and stretch it out. Okay, so it's, it's you know, roughly, you know, we're, we're hovering around five seconds with this. And I'm gonna go ahead and increase the size here. So let's go ahead and just eyeball it. So I'm roughly, I'm yeah, let's just go ahead and call it an even 400% scale on this, okay? So that's a, you know, a stop sign, right? Um, it doesn't quite look, uh, I've always found the teal stop sign interesting. I think that's a funny, uh, you know, I almost feel like whoever did that has a really interesting sense of humor. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into an icon shape, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna navigate over to the bold style set under shapes, and we're gonna have a perfect a circle shape in here. And uh, and while we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move my bell glyph up to track three now. And now I'm gonna drag down this circle shape to track two. And this is where it gets kind of fun. So now I'm gonna go over to the corner of my octagon. I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'm gonna drag the edge of that circle shape. 
and I'm just going to keep fiddling around until I get it so it snaps perfectly to the left, perfectly to the top. So I'm in the upper left quadrant here. Now, now that I have this established, let's go ahead and just repeat this. So how we're going to do this workflow wise is we're going to group the circle to the uh, octagon shape. So if I go ahead and group this and I go ahead and rename this group, let's call it um, icon rectangle. And let's go ahead and move our bell glyph back down and let's open up the icon rectangle and let's just continue these steps. So I'm gonna copy, paste the circle and I'm gonna bring that into the corner. And you know what, while we're at it, let's shortcut things, select both the circles we just drew, copy, paste, and drag it to the other corner. Now, if I change the colors, I can make this look like an icon, but we wanna go further than this, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into a single shape. And how we're gonna do this is by going back to the main timeline. It doesn't matter what these are colored, but you can already get the sense of how this is gonna be a rounded rectangle, right? So I'm gonna move my bell glyph up again. I preemptively moved that up. I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna drag another shape down. So let's first, let's move the icon rectangle up and I'm gonna bring another shape and it really doesn't matter uh, what shape it is. Whoops, I gotta go back to my main timeline here. Really does not matter what shape it is. I'm gonna bring that in and let's just oversize it, okay? This is gonna be my icon shape. And uh, you know, let's give it a cool color. What's a, what's a nice color that we could use? Okay, um, indigo, not bad. Um, magenta, that's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and use that. And so now I'm gonna go to my icon rectangle and I'm gonna right click on the eyeball. And now I'm just gonna select alpha. And just like that, if I hit spacebar, I've drawn a animated bell icon. All right, let's watch it one more time. Nice, it's simplistic, it's beautiful. If we wanna add a little extra flair to it, we can turn our gradient uh, effect on on the actual fill. It's a fill style is what we call it. But I wanna go even further than this. So let's go and go back to solid. In an earlier video, I showed you how to make gradients. Uh, let's go ahead and navigate over to my gradient library. And uh, let's see if I can find it really quickly here. JD gradients there. And uh, let's go ahead and use the uh, Let's go ahead and use the indigo gradient. So if I pull this one down and uh, let's go ahead and zoom back out on our timeline. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna swap this out. So I'm gonna drag this down. I'm gonna go down to my shape. I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna drag and hold over it and do a ripple replace. And let's go ahead and preview this. So if I go ahead and, and go zoom in, let's go all the way in. Hit space bar. And just like that, you have a very cool icon that you can put in the front and the end of your videos to remind your viewers to hit that bell, melee the bell, uh, subscribe, and, uh, and stay tuned to all of your content because I know you guys are making great content out there. And I hope you subscribe to my content and don't sh be shy and hit that notification bell because more videos are coming right at you from the, the old backyard here in Michigan. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check the description. You'll see the project file so you can follow along with me. And uh, don't be afraid to leave a comment if you have questions and or show your work. I'd love to see what you're doing. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.